Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Ever since uh, Flutter 3.32.4 was released on Flutterflow, there has been some cause issue for Firebase storage. What this means is that your app can no longer access the files stored on Firebase. And there's, heaps of, there's a lot of complaints right there why this change occurred and how it has impacted um, people's existing app. However, the Flutterflow team has released a documentation guide on how to implement it. However, some people are still having issues on actually following the guide and implementing it correctly. So in this video, I will show you a method, uh, a, me a different method, but very similar to what the Flutterflow team has published in terms of uh, setting your cores for Firebase storage. Um, so the documentation is here and I'm sure you can find it on the Flutterflow official documentation on the configuring course of Firebase storage. Um, overall, I'll follow 50% of the guide and then the remaining 50% I'll show you a different way um, because some people are having issue um, doing this. But of course, feel free to go through the guide um, to understand each of these tiny pieces and what exactly it means. So first things first, what I would do is pull up your uh, project on Google Cloud Console and what you need to do firstly is activate the Cloud Shell. So this basically is a terminal that is provided by Google Cloud online and just say authorize this um, account. And then once it is authorized, you'll see this editor. Um, if you don't see the editor, um, there is a button here. I think if I, you might see this when it first opened on a collapse view, uh, just press open editor and then you'll basically see this inline editor, which Google has. Um, what the Flutterflow documentation does is it tells you to define and upload a course file, but with the inline editor, you're able to actually create this um, course file itself. So what you're going to do here is click new file and then go course.json and then that's created. And then all you're going to do here is now, of course you can read and uh, read about the setting for your course but I'm just gonna copy this basic one, which allows all origin and to get, which is basically to read the file and the max age of 3600. So basically, um, of course you can read all about it. You can set origins, you can set headers and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna press this, paste it and press save. So I'm gonna just command S, I'll save it sometime. Order. Um, and then what you're gonna do now here is go to terminal and click new terminal. And then you can see this terminal here. And although the instruction says, uh, do G Cloud storage bucket update, blah, 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 blah. What I like to do in the past when I have had this issue is G, uh, GS util cause set cause.json and then your um, folder name. So your folder name is basically you can find it on storage, on your Firebase storage. And then you can just copy this um, here. This is just a play around project of mine and then press enter. And now it will run and this um, will tell you setting cores on this. And then you can actually run this command that Flutterflow has, um, I guess, informed us in the doc to identify whether the cores has been set correctly. So I'm just gonna edit this command on the side and then I will run it on the terminal. And then you can see I press enter you can see that um, the cause has been set. So as per the cause that I have created in line. So this methodology is slightly different to Flutterflow one because they tell you to create it and then upload it. And then uh, we have a different, uh, I guess, command. But it's very similar in the end to setting the cause. Um, so hope this short, super short tutorial helped you understand how to fix your cause issue on for Firebase storage so your files and images can still be accessed. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe for more content for Adflow. See you next time.